Today, new research reveals cyber criminals are continuing to ditch Bitcoin for stable coins. Coinbase and the SEC get grilled by a federal judge as the agency's lawsuit against the crypto company heads to court. And Valkyrie's chief investment officer weighs in on why Bitcoin is in the red following the launch of spot ETFs in the US. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Talia Kaplan. Crypto prices in the red this morning. As of noon Eastern, Bitcoin dipped 1%, falling below $42,000. Ether dropped nearly 2% to the $2,400 level, and Polygon's Matic token sank nearly 6%. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. The SEC and Coinbase squared off in front of a federal judge yesterday. Coinbase made the case that the SEC's lawsuit, which alleges the exchange offered unregistered securities, should be dismissed. The SEC, on the other hand, pushed back on that argument, urging the judge to move the case forward. Unfortunately, both sides will have to wait for an answer. According to Reuters, after grilling both parties on the legal precedent for securities and crypto tokens during the four-hour hearing, the judge said she was still weighing some questions before coming to a decision. The case has been closely watched by the crypto industry to understand just how much power the SEC has to regulate the space. Next, Gemini told CNBC exclusively that the firm has been awarded crypto registration to launch its services in France. The crypto exchange, which was founded by twins Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss, said it was approved as a virtual asset services provider by the French market's watchdog. The firm added that it would roll out its products to retail and institutional clients in France in the coming weeks as it completes final preparations to open its whole platform to French users. A Gemini executive told CNBC that during a visit to the European Union last year, the company's founders realized that in Europe there is both a strong sense of regulatory support for the industry, but also much needed regulatory clarity on the horizon with the EU Markets and Crypto Assets Regulation, which is due to take effect this year. The development comes as major U.S. crypto companies are turning to the EU to expand their operations, driven in large part by a regulatory crackdown from U.S. regulators, including the SEC. Last January, Gemini and crypto lender Genesis were charged by the agency with allegedly selling unregistered securities in connection with Gemini Earn, a high-yield savings product. Gemini denies its interest-bearing products qualified as securities and is trying to get the lawsuit thrown out. Last, Chainalysis released its annual Crypto Crime Trends report this morning, revealing that illicit activity declined in 2023 compared to the year before as scams and hacks dropped but ransomware and darknet activity increased. According to this report from the blockchain intelligence firm, more than $24 billion worth of crypto was received by illicit addresses last year. That's a nearly 40% drop from 2022. The research also reveals that cyber criminals ditched Bitcoin for stablecoins, which accounted for the majority of illicit transaction volume in 2023, as they did in 2022. Before that, Bitcoin was the preferred crypto among criminals, accounting for a majority of transaction volume every year between 2018 and 2021. All right, turning to spot Bitcoin ETFs for our main story. It has been exactly one week since these ETFs went live in the U.S. As of noon Eastern, all of them are in the red, down around 4% since they started trading last Thursday. So I spoke with Stephen McClurg, co-founder and CIO of Valkyrie Investments, one of the asset managers now offering a spot Bitcoin ETF, about how it's going and what has changed since these products launched. Last time we spoke was in December, ahead of the much anticipated decision on spot Bitcoin ETFs. At the time, you told me that you had a high level of confidence that yours will get approved, adding that you thought all the applications will get approved all at once. Sure enough, your prediction came true. Now, you have been working on this since 2021, and now, about three years later, Valkyrie is offering spot Bitcoin ETFs. So after all this time and effort, how does it feel now that your ETF is trading on the NASDAQ? It feels great. You know, we've uh, definitely been working hard for the last three years to get this done. Uh, also working on several other things while we're at it, too. So uh, while we were waiting on Bitcoin spot, we decided to launch a Bitcoin mining ETF, a Bitcoin futures ETF, uh, and even got into the game with the ETH futures. So uh, now we finally hit the pinnacle of everything that we've been working on. And it's either only downhill from here or only up from here. And I'm sure you're hoping for the latter, but how's it going so far for you? Are you noticing there's demand for your product? 
Yeah, we actually have quite a bit of demand. Um, I'm actually surprised at how much demand there was in the first three days of trading uh, across the board, across everybody's ETFs. Uh, I thought it was going to get out of the gates a little slower and uh, ramp up towards the end of the year. But uh, this was actually higher than what we predicted uh, as far as flows go. And we do expect uh, a lot more flows to come in once financial advisors have begun to evaluate managers, evaluate the funds and evaluate the asset class themselves. What do you think has changed now that these ETFs are live, specifically as it pertains to the perception of crypto? Yeah, what's interesting is I've spoken to several different uh, institutions out there uh, that, that uh, oversee financial advisors and platforms. And what I've noticed is uh, a very common thread that clients are calling their advisors asking for access to, to Bitcoin. And a lot of the advisors are having to say, no, we can't do that just yet. We're still understanding the asset class ourselves. And what a lot of them are telling their clients is that, well, maybe you want a Bitcoin adjacent ETF, such as uh, Bitcoin miners or some other type of Bitcoin ecosystem fund. And that has seemed to be a very popular place for uh, financial advisors to direct their clients while they're still trying to figure out Bitcoin. Since launching all the spot Bitcoin ETFs are in the red, that makes sense given Bitcoin is down, but why do you think the ETFs are down more than the cryptocurrency? And why do you think Bitcoin is in the red following that landmark decision? We saw an initial pop above $49,000, but then Bitcoin came back down. And when we spoke last time, we noted that the upcoming halving coupled with the Bitcoin ETF approval will move the cryptocurrency in a favorable way. So what do you think happens now that Bitcoin bounced back to the low 40s? Now, look, I think what happened was a lot of people got excited and tried to front run uh, the ETFs launching. So that drove the price of Bitcoin up uh, a little bit higher than it should have been. So when the ETFs launched, uh, the price of Bitcoin definitely came down. Uh, following that first day. Uh, I do expect Bitcoin and subsequently the Bitcoin ETFs to trade pretty range bound through April or May, uh, somewhere between 42,000 and 49,000. Then after the halving in April and after the Fed starts making its decisions in May, uh, we should see a pickup in the price of Bitcoin. In addition to that, we're still not seeing the full effects of a Bitcoin ETF just yet. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, financial advisors are still looking at this asset class, still looking at the ETFs themselves and trying to decide when's a good opportune time to put their clients in. And uh, I do believe that that will be coming in the next three to six months. And of course, it will be very interesting to see if that happens. But 11 ETFs got approved all at once last week. Clearly, there is competition out there, something that has played out through the race to lower fees. In fact, Valkyrie cut its fee just before launch to 0.25% and waived them for the first three months. What was behind that move? Was it the competition and has lowering your fee proved effective? Yeah, I think it has because in, in this type of environment, you don't want to be the outlier in an ETF, uh, but we're also not the low cost provider, right? We're not, you know, we're, try not, we're not trying to be the super cuts of, uh, of ETFs here. But uh, I think we're, we're, we're somewhere firmly in the middle, uh, not an outlier. We're, we're within reasonable range and we have reasonable expertise as well. So uh, I think we can charge a little bit more than most. Uh, but uh, how's it affected it? I don't think fees have really affected the outcome all that much. There hasn't been a strong correlation between uh, fees and gathering of assets. Uh, the only correlations that I've seen is the ones that are the outliers on fees uh, that are extremely high have either lost assets in the case of Grayscale or have not gathered as much uh, compared to their size uh, in the case of some others. So with 11 options out there and all the competition, do you think we'll see consolidation among these ETFs in the near future? I do think a few won't make it. Um, but what I do expect to happen is that uh, financial advisors and other institutions will probably move towards the inst or, or to the other managers that they have contracts with and sales agreements with. Uh, so that's going to be uh, one of the factors. Uh, typically, the way that 
advisors and money allocators work is they like to choose two or three different managers that run the similar style ETF or, or, or the same ETF. So usually one bucket is, you know, the big manager that everybody knows, which is, you know, like, like the Black Rocks and the Fidelities of the world. And then the other bucket is usually the niche experts in the space. And we hope to win over um, the allocators in that area as being uh, experts in the space uh, that, that focus on Bitcoin uh, and not just, you know, here for a quick run. Last time we spoke in December, you said that you believe SEC Chair Gary Gensler is a, quote, big proponent of Bitcoin and this ETF launching. However, after spot Bitcoin ETFs were approved, Gensler joined CNBC Squawk Box and stressed that the move does not mean the SEC endorses Bitcoin, something he also said in a statement following the approvals. He also repeatedly warned investors to be cautious about the risks associated with Bitcoin and products whose value is tied to crypto. So do you still think the SEC chair is a proponent of Bitcoin after all his public comments leading up to and following the approval? I, I really do. And, and, I, and my comment really goes back to how progressive the SEC has been under Gensler. Uh, from from the beginning, he's uh, been supportive of launching Bitcoin futures uh, in both in, in, in both ways, right? One in 1940 Act, one in 1933 Act. Uh, e futures, he's uh, supported that, as well as uh, the ability to launch a Bitcoin spot ETF, which we just had. Um, now, what he said is absolutely correct. The SEC does not necessarily support the investment thesis of any of you know publicly traded stock or any components of any ETF. Uh, all they're doing is approving the wrapper and uh, approving that this belongs in capital markets. Uh, any kind of investment decision is really up to the individual buy. Now, McClurg also discussed whether he thinks the SEC might greenlight an Ether ETF now that spot Bitcoin ETFs are trading. And he answers whether Valkyrie will now feel compelled to file an application for a spot ETH ETF. You'll be able to check out the full interview over at cnbc.com slash crypto world. OK, that's all for today, but we'll be back again tomorrow and we'll see you then.